Hi, welcome to the next GCSE Higher Revision video. So there's 93 days to go until your GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going to focus on circle theorems. So if you've got the revision cards, cards number 11 and 12 might be useful for you in terms of your circle theorems. But in this video, we're going to go through the circle theorems. I'm going to go through some typical questions, then give you some to try yourself. So make sure you pause the video and you try those questions. I hope you're going to find it useful. And yeah, let's get started. So the first circle frame we're going to look at is that the angle in the semicircle is 90 degrees. So if you've got a triangle inside of a circle like so, where the line here, this line goes through the center of the circle, so this is the diameter, then the angle at the top will be 90 degrees. So this is always a right angle. So let's have a look at an example. Uh, feel free to pause the video now and give this a shot if you want to. So we've got this triangle, and because this is the diameter, and we've got this triangle inside of the circle, that's going to be a right angle. So that's a right angle triangle, so that's 90 degrees. We've got this is equal to 41 degrees. So if we do 90 plus 41, that's equal to 131 degrees. And then if we just take that away from 180, so we do 180, subtract 131, that's equal to 49 degrees. So it means that x here is equal to 49 degrees, and that's it. Okay, before we look at the next circle frame, one thing I just want to point out for to say to watch out for whenever you're dealing with circle frame questions is that if you have a radius and another radius, so two radii, that they're the same length as each other. So you may find that there's going to be isosceles triangles involved in these circle frame questions and to look out for those. So here, because this is the center of the circle and this is a radius, that length there would be the same as this length here because this is also a radius. So that means that this is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so we would do 180 degrees, subtract 100, that's equal to 80. And then if we take our 80 degrees, and divide it by 2, that's equal to 40 degrees. So this angle here, x, would be 40 degrees, and that's it. So look out for those isosceles triangles whenever you're dealing with circle frame questions. Okay, here's another one for you to try now yourself. Feel free to pause the video and to give this one a try and find the sides of angles x, y, and z. Okay, so again, we've got some radii here. So we've got from the center to here, from the center to here, and from the center O to here. So this line, this line, and this line are all equal lengths. So that means that this is an isosceles triangle here, and it means that this is also an isosceles triangle here. Now, if we have a look at this isosceles triangle on the left-hand side, we've got that this line is the same length as this line. So it means that this is an isosceles triangle, and it means that this angle here, the Y, is the same as this angle here. So it means that Y is equal to 52 degrees. So Y is equal to 52 degrees. So we find the size of y, now we want to find the size of this angle x. Now the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if this is 52 and this is 52, we're going to do 52 plus 52. That's equal to 104 degrees. And then if we take that away from 180, so if we do 180, subtract 104, that's equal to 76 degrees. So that means that x would be 76 degrees, so x is equal to 76 degrees. So that's 76 degrees. So we've now found the size of two of the angles, x and y. Now let's find the size of z. So here we've got a straight line, we've got x is 76 degrees, and we've got z. So these two angles will add together to be 180 degrees. So if we do 180, take away 76, we're going to get that equal to 104 degrees. So it means that z is equal to 104 degrees. So just look out for those isosceles triangles whenever you're dealing with circle theorem questions. Okay, so let's have a look at our next circle theorem. So our next circle theorem is that the angle at the circumference is always half the angle at the center. So here, the angle at the circumference is 60 degrees, will be half the angle at the center. So if you've got the center of the circle, and you've got two radii that go to points on the circumference, and then you've got two chords that come up and meet at a point, the angle at the center will be double the angle at the circumference, or the angle at the circumference will be half the angle at the center. Okay, so here's two to try yourself now, so feel free to pause the video and find the size of the angle x in this question, and find the size of the angle x in this question. Okay, so here we've got the angle at the center will be double the angle of the circumference, or the angle of the circumference is half the angle at the center. So we just need to multiply 46 by 2. So if we do 46 multiplied by 2, that's equal to 92. So that means that x here would be 92 degrees, and that's it. And here with this one, we were given the angle at the center was 104 degrees. So the angle of the circumference would be half of that. So 104 degrees divided by 2 would be equal to 52 degrees. So the size of this angle here would be 52 degrees. And that's it. So the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center, or the angle at the center is double the angle at the circumference. Now in terms of the circle frame, I wanted to look at one more example. So here's a question here. If you want to try this one, feel free to pause the video. So we want to find the angle of the circumference, but we don't have the angle at the center. The angle at the center has got to be this angle here. So the angles at a point add up together to be 360 degrees. So here we need to find the size of this angle. So we're going to do 360, subtract 250, and that's equal to 110 degrees. So this angle here would be 110 degrees. And the angle at the center now is 110 degrees, and we want to find the angle at the circumference, so we just half it. So we're just going to take our 110 and divide by 2, and we're going to find that's equal to 55 degrees. So x here is 55 degrees, and that's it.
Okay, let's have a look at our next circle frame. So our next circle frame is, if we've got a chord, such as this blue dotted line, and we've got two chords that come up and meet here and here, and we've got two chords that come up and meet here and here, the angles in the same segment will be equal to each other. So in other words, this angle will be the same as this angle. So here, if we had this circle here, and again, feel free to pause the video now and to write down the values of A and B. So here we've got a common chord. We've got this chord here, and we've got chords that come up and meet at A, so here and here, we've got chords that come up here and meet at the 32 degree angle here, and we've got the chords that come up and meet at B. So the angles in this same segment are all going to be the same as each other. So A would be equal to 32 degrees, B would also be equal to 32 degrees, and that's it. Okay, so here's another question. I want you to have a look at this question now and see if you can figure out the size of this angle X. Okay, so to find the size of this angle X, we've got this triangle on the left hand side. Now if we have a look here, we've also got this chord. So the lines come up from the chord and they meet here at the angle X, but they also come up and meet here at this angle here. So if we can find the size of this angle, it means that X would be the same size as this angle here. So let's find the size of this angle. So here we've got a triangle, and to find the size of this angle, we're going to do 79 plus 20, and that's equal to 99 degrees. And then if we do 180, take away 99, that's equal to 81 degrees. So it means that this angle here is equal to 81 degrees. Now we've got these two angles in the same segment, this 81 degrees and X, that means that X would be equal to 81 degrees, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next circle frame. So our next circle frame is that the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral always add to 180 degrees. So if you've got a quadrilateral where all four points are points on the circumference of the circle, the opposite angles will add together to be 180 degrees. So 110 degrees plus 70 degrees, and 100 degrees plus 80 degrees. Okay, so let's have a look at a question now. So here's our example. Feel free to pause the video now to give this question a shot and see if we can find the size of angle X and angle Y. Okay, so the first thing I'd want to do here is we've got this angle outside of the quadrilateral. We've got this 110 degrees, but we've got a straight line. So that means that this angle, the 110 degrees, and this angle will add together to be 180 degrees as a straight line. So it means that this angle is 70 degrees. So we've now got our cyclic quadrilateral with the points here, 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 and here, so the opposite angles will add together to be 180 degrees. So to start off with X, if we do 180, subtract 70, that's equal to 110 degrees. So it means X is equal to 110 degrees. Now in terms of Y, again, the opposite angles add together to be 180 degrees. So if we do 180, take away 125, that's equal to 55 degrees. So it means that Y here would be 55 degrees, and that's it. So the opposite angles in a cycle of quadrilateral will always add together to be 180 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at our next circle frame. So our next circle frame is, if you've got a radius and a tangent, the angle between them will always be 90 degrees. And I always think about this in terms of maybe a bicycle on the ground, that if you draw the radius from the center of the bicycle down to the ground, and then you've got the ground, which is the tangent, the angle between them will be 90 degrees. Okay, so here's an example now using this circle frame. So again, feel free to pause the video now and to try this question. Okay, so we've got a circle, we've got a tangent, and we've got a radius. That means that this angle here is 90 degrees. Now let's find the size of this angle here. These two angles are in a straight line, so they will add together to be 180 degrees, so that means that this angle is 20 degrees. We've got this triangle, this is a right angle, so that's 90 degrees, so 90 plus 20, 90 plus 20 is equal to 110 degrees, so it means that this angle down here would be equal to 70 degrees. And finally, we've got this straight line with X, this is a straight line, so if that's 70, this angle here would be 110 degrees, and that's it, so X is 110 degrees, and hopefully you got that right. Okay, let's have a look at our next circle frame. Okay, let's have a look at our next circle frame. So our next circle frame is the only one with a catchy name, and that's the alternate segment frame. And the alternate segment frame says the angle between the chord, so this chord and the tangent, is equal to the size of the opposite angle inside of the triangle. So in other words, the angle between the chord and the tangent here, the 70 degrees, would be the same as the angle inside the triangle on the opposite side. And likewise, this 60 degrees would be equal to the size of the angle on the opposite side inside of the triangle there, the 60 degrees here, and that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at a question using alternate segment. Frame. So here we've got a triangle, and we've got our tangent, and we've got some angles. So can you write down the sizes of angle X and angle Y? Okay, so our 65 degrees, the angle between the chord and the tangent, will be equal to the size of the opposite angle inside the triangle. So that means that X is 65 degrees. And in terms of our Y, that will be equal to 75 degrees, because it's equal to the size of the angle between the chord and the tangent on the opposite side. So that's going to be 75 degrees, and that's it. If you were asked to find the size of this angle here, let's just call it Z, you'd know that this is a straight line. So you could do 75 plus 65 and take that away from 180, and you can find the size of that angle. Alternatively, you could also just look at the triangle and work out the size of the angle that way as well. 
Okay. Okay, let's have a look at two more circle theorems. So this circle theorem is, if you've got a point outside of the circle, perhaps C, and you draw two tangents, so the tangent from C to D and from C to E, that those two tangents will be the same length as each other. So C to D and C to E will be the same length. And also, that if you've got a chord and a radius, that the radius will cut the chord or bisect the chord at 90 degrees. So this radius will cut the chord in half, so this length will be the same as this length, and it'll be a 90 degree angle. Okay, so I've now got some circle frame questions for you to try now yourself. I've got three of them, so feel free to pause the video to try this question, and then I'll go through it. Okay, so here we've got a circle, and we want to find the size of this angle here. Now, this looks a bit like alternate segment theorem, and that was, remember, when the angle between the chord and the tangent is equal to the size of the opposite angle inside the triangle. So that means that this angle here, if this is 60 degrees, this angle here would be 60 degrees. And now we've got this triangle, we can work out the size of x, because we could do 60 plus 56, and 60 plus 56 would be equal to 116 degrees. And then if we do 180, take away 116, that would be equal to 64 degrees. So that means that x here would be equal to 64 degrees, so x is 64 degrees, and hopefully you got that. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got a circle, and we've centered the circle is O, and we've got this point P outside of the circle. And we've got a tangent that goes and touches the circle at Q and carries on, and we've got another tangent that touches the circle at R and carries on. And we've been asked to find the length of OQ, so we want to find the length of this. I'm just going to call it X to begin with. So here we've got a tangent and a radius. They will meet at 90 degrees. So that's a right angle. So that means that triangle OPQ is a right angle triangle. Now also remember that we, if you've got a point outside of a circle, so this point P, the distance from P to Q and from P to R will be the same length as each other. So this is 30 centimeters, this is 30 centimeters. So that's fantastic. We've now got a right angle triangle and we know the lengths of two of the sides and we just need to find the length of the other. And think back to a few days ago, we looked at Pythagoras' theorem, so we can just use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the size of this length. So we're gonna use Pythagoras' theorem. So let's write that down, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's label our sides. A and B are the two shorter sides, and C is the hypotenuse, the longer side. So here's the right angle, so that means that this is the hypotenuse, C, so this is the hypotenuse, and then the two shorter sides, I'm gonna call them A and B. So we've got A squared, that's gonna be X squared, plus B squared, which is 30 squared, equals C squared, which is 34 squared. And now we just need to work this out. So we've got X squared plus, and 30 times 30 is 900, is equal to 34 squared, and 34 times 34 is 1,156. Now let's take away 900 and take away 900. And when we do that on the left-hand side, we'd get x squared. And on the right-hand side, if we take away 900, we get that's equal to 256. Now the length of this radius is obviously not 256 centimeters, that's x squared. So we now need to square root, so x is equal to the square root of 256, which is equal to the square root of 256 is equal to 16. So that means that x is 16 16 centimeters, x is 16 centimeters, and that means that OQ is 16 centimeters, what we were trying to find, and that's it. So whenever you're dealing with circle theorems, you may occasionally encounter Pythagoras, or you might even encounter trigonometry if we wanted to find the size of some of these angles, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our last example. So we've got a circle with center O, we've got the points on the circumference, T, Q, R, and S, and we've got the point P outside of the circle. And we've been asked to find the size of this angle here, Y. So this question, it looks quite complicated, but to be honest, if I was to do this question, what I would do is I would start trying to find some of the other angles on the diagram, and once I find some of them, then I'll probably be able to find the size of this angle Y. So feel free to pause the video now, and to try this question, try to find the missing angles. Okay, so if I had this question, the first thing I'd do is, as I said, would be to try to find some of the other missing angles. So here, if I have a look here, I've got, I'm just going to draw this little shape on here. So if we have a look at this shape, looking back to our previous circle theorems, we know that the angle at the center is double the angle of the circumference, or the angle of the circumference is half the angle at the center. So to find the size of this angle here, what we can do is we can just half the 124. And half of 124 is equal to 62. So that means that this angle here is 62 degrees. So that's fantastic, we've found one angle. Okay, now if we have a look at another shape, Okay, so we found one angle, 62 degrees. Now I've drawn this quadrilateral, this cyclic quadrilateral, TQRS. And that means that the angles that are opposite each other will add together to be 180 degrees. So if we've got this angle, which is 62 degrees, if we want to find the size of this angle here, we can just do 180, subtract 62, because it's a cyclic quadrilateral and the opposite angles add to 180 degrees. So let's do that. So that means that this angle at Q would be 118 degrees. So that's fantastic. 
Okay, so we found two of the angles, and we're still trying to find the size of this angle y. Now, find a bit of a plan to find this angle y. We've got this 118 degrees. Well, PQR is a straight line, so we can work out the size of this angle here. And then, if we look, we've got triangle PQT, so we can then find the size of this angle by considering the triangle. So let's do that. So to find the size of this angle here, we're going to do 180, subtract 118 degrees, and that'll be 62 degrees. So that means that this angle here is 62 degrees. And then finally, we've got this triangle with PQT. Well, they'll add together to be 180 degrees. So we're going to do 100 degrees plus 62 degrees is equal to 162 degrees. And then we're going to do 180, subtract 162 degrees, and that's equal to 18 degrees. So that means the size of this angle is 18 degrees, and that's it. So in this video, we've looked at the different circle frames, that so the angle in a semicircle, this angle is 90 degrees. We've got that the angle of the circumference is half the angle at the center. We've got the angles in the same segment are equal to each other. So if you've got this chord and you've got the lines that come up and meet at different points of the circumference, those angles in the same segment will be equal to each other. We've got the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add together to be 180 degrees. We've got that the angle between the radius and a tangent is 90 degrees. We've got the alternate segment theorem, and that's where the angle between the chord and the tangent is equal to the size of the opposite angle inside of the triangle. So if this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees. If this is 70, that's 70. And also we've got the circle theorem that the lengths of the tangents from the same point will be the same length as each other. And finally, we've got the, the radius will bisect the chord at 90 degrees. And that's it. So there's quite a lot of circle frames to remember. These are the chord maps revision card. So if you have got the chord maps revision card, that'd be really useful for you to pin up to have somewhere that you can see regularly, or even to get people to quiz you on the circle frames. It's very important to remember the circle frames. And also it's important to be able to apply the circle frames. So I'd highly recommend you have got the practice questions as well, because being able to spot those shapes and spot those circle frames in a diagram, which might be quite complicated. So have a look at those practice questions as well. And that's it. So this video has been focused on circle theorems. We've looked at the different circle theorems and then we've looked at some questions that apply those. With circle theorems, it's hard to predict what type of circle theorem questions you're going to get. So I'd highly recommend you look at the practice questions. So if you go to the description below and look at circle theorems, there's the practice questions there which will be useful for you. Again, keep up the hard work with the five a days, keep up the hard work with all your lessons and your homework and so on, and keep pushing for that good grade. So keep going. Okay, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.